I just wanted to take a moment really quick here and do a little trigger warning for this podcast episode. We do talk about death and dying here, which is nothing new if you've tuned into the podcast before. However, we will be discussing child death, child loss, and afterlife. So if that is something that you are sensitive to, I might suggest that you skip this episode and we'll see you next week, okay? But if you are comfortable making it through this episode, we're happy to have you and let's begin. Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Coffin Conversations with me, Lauren the Mortician. And today I have a really special guest. I actually have my mom here. To know you're like, oh my gosh, Lauren just called her mom (laughs) to come be on the podcast. But she was in town and I just thought it'd be so fun to have her on here because as you guys know, I grew up in a funeral home, which means, I mean, this is my mother. So we grew together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You were in your 20s. We both kind of grew up in the funeral home. Yeah, we both kind of grew up in the funeral home. And uh, she has just such great stories. She's a wonderful storyteller too. And I just I couldn't think of a better person to have on the podcast today, but my mom. So thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, I she, think. <laughs> she's nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> and she regrets that we didn't bring any wine. <laughs> that's just, that's just, we're just being funny. And I, I, I also. can't function without it. <laughs> Um, I also just want to give a quick uh, shout out to To Be Better Podcast. Uh, They're here letting us record at the studio. And Chris is going to be editing this later for me. And we've already talked about going over and stealing some of his stash over there. (laughs) He's got a great selection of, is that bourbon? and Whiskey. Whiskey. And oh my goodness. Yeah. Yep, they got it all here at the To Be Better podcast. So if you don't follow them, definitely do. We love Chris and some peaches. So, mm mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. If you didn't know, Peaches is really tall. <laughs> I had no. I walked in and went, "Woo, hey, that's a tall." Drink she's tall. She's tall. Yeah, I guess it's beautiful too. <laughs> They're both wonderful. So I'm so glad they had us. It's really refreshing when you see people online, and then when you meet them in person, and they're just like how they are online. Exactly. And that's, they're both exactly just how they are online, and that's so nice. Uh, I've been filming, which you probably don't know this. Uh, I've been going over to Chris and Peaches. They they also have a setup in their house. Oh, nice. And I've been going over there. And she has a little segment she calls the cemetery segment on her Patreon. It's exclusive to her Patreon. Oh, nice. And we've been doing ghost stories. I love it. So I go, no, you're right. I did not know that. <laughs> I would go over there. And the other night we had a little bit too much wine. And we were really good. Um, oh, you we had were, wine over there? Yeah, we had wine over there. <laughs> And I bought her some new teacups so we can have a little matching cutesy. The teacups oh, yes. at home. Did goods. you give them to her? Yeah, I did. Did she love them? Yeah, she loved them. We made mm-hmm. the right choice. Yeah, we made the right choice. I love it. I wish they were here today. I, I think they are. They're over there. Lift your pinky. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. You They're really pinky. cute. They're really cute. Uh, you'll see those on I'll, next next Peaches Pod. Oh, my gosh. The Peaches, peaches pod. pod. The Peaches Pod. You're on to something then. Oh, uh, there we go. Uh, We'll have to drink out of our little teacups I got. Yes. But anyways, so I thought I'd have my mom here today because, like we said earlier, we both kind of grew up together. I mean, she raised us as babies in the funeral home, and um, I really have questions to ask her that I'm dying to know, too, that I... And she's nervous. Do you hear her? (laughs) You don't need to be nervous. No, it. I I told her, it's like, we're we're just hanging out. We're having a conversation. You don't Can have you hear to hear my heartbeat. Nervous. I mean, this thing is so close. No, oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go. So let's start it off. Um, so if you are unaware, my mom and dad met when they were in high school before my dad became a mortician. Mm-hmm. But he was going. He was working at a place, wasn't he? No. No, when you no. were dating, no. He was a paramedic. Oh, that's right. I think, you know, for a short time, like between him or his brother, they did mow lawn for a funeral home. Uh, and that that is really what sparked the entire thing was I think when they were 16 or something, maybe 15, 16, they started mowing lawns for a local funeral home. And that funeral director kind of took one or both of them under his wing and really um, nurtured that relationship, friendship. And then eventually the the mentorship for becoming funeral directors. Okay. Mm-hmm. So 
you guys start dating <laughs> and I, I, I guess I want to know, you tell the story all the time about when you would go on dates with dad and then he'd get a call that you'd have to go on. Yeah. So do you have any weird dating stories of well, dating? Well, we had a sordid sort of dating deal. It was this back and forth type of a thing. And um, eventually we kind of settled into, okay, we're going to be dating. And then by that time, um, because I met him when I was 16, uh, stopped talking to him because I didn't like him. <laughs> I don't know how I'm here. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> and then we met back up in college. And okay. It just so happened he was in my classes. And at that time, he was a paramedic and also going to school to be a funeral director. Okay. And so what that meant for us was he was doing some internship work and Sometimes we would be out on a date and he would get a call. And that was, I really wasn't prepared for any of that. No. Nope. Nope. I was not prepared for any of that. So we did have some first dates in there, like when we were really dating just exclusively, where he would get a call. And he would get a death call. So he'd have to go to yeah. the death scene and he would have to go pick up can I say you can say whatever oh, you want okay, I can say whatever I want okay so he would have to go and pick up a body and we were kind of in that really uh, in love <laughs> phase and didn't want to be apart so he would look at me and say hey I I have to go pick up a body do you want to come with me and I didn't want to go home so I would say yes sure honey <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> but it was a problem. Internally, it was a huge problem because no one in my family had died at that time. I had, I think, I I shouldn't say that. One person, a great, great, great grandma, I had been to one funeral in my life. And at that time, when we were really dating, then I think I was 19. Okay. 20, maybe. I So you had been around, you had not been around death whatsoever. No. And you're like, okay, let's. No, I had no clue about anything. The words death call were, that was a weird phrase to me. I didn't, death call, oh my gosh. Going on a death you know, call. Death was, was scary at that time. Some, I, I've gotten corrected on that a lot when I say it online. Uh, to me, it, you're going on it, it's, it's a death call. You will get corrected by older school funeral directors. They're like, it's a first call. Right. But when you're talking to people and you're talking about death, what the heck is a first call? But versus if you just say we're going on a death call. Well, maybe a first call if you're with somebody who's not your family. But in our family, over the dinner table, we called it a death call. Mm -hmm. It was always called a death call. Mm -hmm. In fact, I never really heard anybody say it was a first call unless they were on the phone or something mm -hmm. like that. True. Mm -hmm. It just got to be the way of life. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, you know, after we got married and everything, and it just was normal. It was normal to say death call. He got a death call. So bring me back to tell me the story. <laughs> tell me the story of when you went on one of these death calls with dad and you were on a date, and he's got to put somebody in the van. And how was that for you? Do you remember the first time? That mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, like yesterday. <laughs> and it was many, many years ago. Um, so we did indeed go. We had to go to a funeral home and uh, pick this person up. And uh, they, can I say how they died? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I want to know. <laughs> this was so many years ago. On this particular one, this was a homeless person who was looking for a place to sleep, and he had climbed into a dumpster to oh, sleep no. for the night. Yeah, it was really awful. Oh. And the next morning was the garbage truck picked up the dumpster, put the oh, no. dumpster into the garbage truck and compacted. Oh no. Garbage. And so 
that was traumatic for me to think about. The yes. whole thing was traumatic. But being in love with someone trumped my trauma. And so I said, <sighs> yes, I would go. So we went. And we went to the funeral home where the body was. And we were picking it up. Picking up the body. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you roll your cot into the funeral home. Yep. So I'm, I stay in the truck because I didn't want to go into the funeral home and we were in a suburban and he goes in and grabs the cot that the man was on, pushes it into the suburban and I'm sitting in the front seat and he slams the door. So you're alone. I was alone with the, the guy. first time for really the first time as a, as a young adult with this person and I saw him saw your dad um walk back into the funeral home and so I you're very alone I was alone I mean the silence was deafening deafening and I wanted to turn around and look and see like who is back there what could I see the person was crushed what's left of them, you know. But you know I can't really see anything. You no, know that. No, no, he's, in, he's inside. But it didn't of, yep. matter to me because death was a stranger to me. So I sat there. I was beginning to get nervous, um, <laughs> kind of hyperventilating. I was keeping myself, I was trying to keep myself under control. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. And then I turned around to look. Oh, no, you looked. I looked. Oh, uh, she looked. I looked. You're hyperventilating and you look. I was like, just look. It's no problem. And there was nothing to see. He was zipped up, mm -hmm. you know, like, like they are, on the cot. Mm -hmm. But what stood out to me was when I turned to look, his head, of course, is right, you know, mm, basically right behind right you. there. And I could still see the silhouette. Maybe I'd call it a, or the, the, the imprint of his nose and his head. And I could tell. Where his hands were? I, his hands were somewhere and I could see that. And I started to panic. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I started to panic. And just as I'm panicking, I don't know what happened. The other funeral director who owned the funeral home came running out and flung the door open and I turned and looked and he said do you want to come inside and I was like yes <laughs> and I was like grabbing imagining myself just grabbing and ripping away at the uh, interior of the van like, <laughs> like a cat being thrown in water I was like yes get me the hell out of here <laughs> and I, I I went I went into the funeral home with him and he's like do you need anything I'm like do you have a bathroom do you have a bathroom oh. he said yes yes he pointed to the bathroom I don't know why he came out there to save me my heart today is even just pounding like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and uh he said the bathroom is right there you can go there and I went into the bathroom I shut the door I fell against the door and I was like <sighs> just calm down Joe just calm down and I let my body slide to the floor, and I was beginning to hyperventilate. Oh. And so I thought, I remembered, okay, when you're hyperventilating, you just kind of put your legs between your knees and just breathe. But I didn't have a bag or anything. I no. Don't know. I was just, no. Scared. I was grasping at straws. And um, as I kind of got back to myself, I could hear singing in the funeral home. And I was thinking, why do I hear singing? I, I heard something, someone singing Swanee River. <laughs> and then I started to kind of laugh, like. How does that song go? I don't know. I just remember Swanee River. <laughs> I don't know the words. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> then what did you do? Oh. I thought it was kind of funny. I thought it was the funeral director singing, and I thought maybe he was just trying to save me and knew that I was hyperventilating in there, and he was adding a little 
twist of of humor to it to get yeah. me out of this funk. So I gingerly stood up, made sure that I wasn't going to pass out, um, grabbed the door handle, composed myself, and walked out to find where the singing was coming from. And I could hear your dad's voice, and I could hear the funeral director's voice, so I knew they weren't singing. And I came around the corner, and all of a sudden I hear, (laughs) (laughs) and I look, I was like, what is going on here? This is crazy. And it's a parrot. It was a parrot? It was a parrot. (laughs) (laughs) So the parrot was singing the Swanee. The parrot was singing Swanee River. A funeral home with a pet bird. Yeah. All right. A funeral home with a, a big one. A, a big, big bird. Oh, uh, it, what do you call those birds? The ones that talk. The ones you can teach. Cockatoo? Yeah. Could a cockatoo? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, that was really my real first experience with death. We had a couple funny, a couple funny things that happened after that. But I composed myself. We got into the truck. And I'm questioning my life decisions i'm questioning why am i dating this guy why am i dating him i thought he was a jerk before (laughs) i was never gonna see him before how did i get here now um and then he looks over and i can't there was a little bit of conversation back and forth and he said so are you hungry let's go get something to eat and i was like mortified (laughs) the last thing i was was hungry The last thing I was was hungry. (laughs) You're like, no. (laughs) Let's just go back. I picked up the paperwork and he looked at the name on there and he turned around and he said, whatever the guy's name was, you hungry? What do you like to eat? And I. (laughs) (laughs) And you just started hyperventilating all over again. Well, I mean, you know, what I came to learn is that humor just, you have to have humor. Mm -hmm. And. If you don't have some humor, well, you're not going to make it very far. No. In this career. No. As you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's humor that people don't understand. Um, at the time, I didn't understand it, but I've come to understand it now. Yep. And actually, I appreciated the humor at the time because I was so... You're so nervous. I was so nervous. I could just I could just picture you nervous laughing like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> No, he's not hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another time, um, some I'm a curious person by nature, but another time we... No, not you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm just so curious. <laughs> this is also the woman you can't hide a Christmas present from in the house. She oh, will find can. the present. It will be wrapped. She will shake it, and she will figure out what you bought her just from shaking it. Mm. <laughs> Well, so. if I have to, I'll measure the box. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, that mental note. And then if I'm at the store and I see that. Oh, my gosh. That happened one. one oh, time, my gosh. My mom had bought me a sewing machine. I had no idea what it was. Nothing. And you measured the box? I that I, I was reduced to measuring the box. Oh. I could not figure out what Reduced it was. to measuring the box? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. But anyways, as far as the curiosity goes, um, one time. He brought me to the funeral home that they were, that they were kind of inter- He wasn't interning out of this particular funeral home. His brother was working there, who was also a funeral director, and um, there was a casket out in the garage that was closed. I figured Batesville had just dropped it off. Um, I don't know what I figured. I figured it would be empty. Mm-hmm. But I was very curious because oh, I no. had never gotten to see what a casket looks what like. What a casket looked like. And the door opened, and he left me in the garage, just <laughs> standing there again. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I'm just, I'm just going to take a peek. Oh, no. And uh, so it was like a peek like this. You know, like I was just going to open it a little bit, and I kind of got down, and I was just going to peek inside. What does it look like? And. Uh, oh, no. There I, there was a body in there. <laughs> I screamed. You screamed? Oh, no. I let out a little cute scream. (laughs) I think it was cute. I don't know. I did scream, though. Probably. Ah! (laughs) Slammed it shut. And um, it turns out it was there just because someone was coming to pick them up. Yeah. Mm. Pick them up. (laughs) 
I wasn't curious after that anymore. Not anymore. Never. I was never. Never again. I was never really that curious. <laughs> there, okay, there was like two more times, but I don't want to talk about those times. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you shouldn't be cu- that curious, you know. And were you like 19 or 20 or in college? I don't I was, I was probably 20. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was probably 20 at the time, maybe 21. It's really young. Mm-hmm. Really mm-hmm. young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never heard that story. You didn't? No. Which one? <laughs> the. <laughs> oh, the peeking in the casket? Yeah, I didn't oh. know you peeked in the casket. Yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> okay, so tell me about the journey of buying the funeral home. Uh, so for those that don't know, my mom and my dad bought a funeral home in a town we had never lived before in a totally different state. No family there. The funeral home was just for sale. Mm-hmm. And dad said, let's do this. And you said, yay, let's go. Or um, you're crazy. There was a, several things going on at that time. I've never asked you this before. There were several things going on at that time. Uh, I was pregnant with you. We Whoops. were married. We were married by this time, but I was pregnant with you. I was at the wedding, by the way. She was at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> in all fairness, we were engaged for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in her belly at the wedding. <laughs> she loves saying that. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I just think it's funny. I just like, I look at your wedding pictures. I'm like, oh, there I am. <laughs> but anyways, uh, how did it go? I mean, he, he graduated uh, from... University of Minnesota, and I was in college still, and we lived in um, we lived in Minnesota at the time, mm-hmm. and it came about that there was a funeral for, home for sale in a tiny little town in a place I had never heard of, <laughs> and it was an opportunity. It was yeah. an opportunity. Mm-hmm. The only thing that that we needed to figure out was how was I going to continue going to college? Where was I going to go? And um, how were we going to work that all out? Yeah. But we figured it all out. We went to visit the funeral home. And it was, I didn't want to do it. You didn't want to do it? Plain and simple, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it because it was such a small town. At that time, I mean, a few hundred people. I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But that was only in the winter. In the summer, it was a huge town, huge town. But as far as people coming in, but there was no stoplight there. They still pumped your gas for you there. Really? Yeah, at the time, they pumped your gas. Now, that was something. Those were of the days of past where we lived. Um, nobody pumped your gas. Everybody knew each other. There was no ATM anywhere. They didn't even have ATMs. Oh my gosh. It was almost like, like a little step back in time. Move to the bonies. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't want to go. I didn't really want to go. How did he convince you to go? Well, we went there and we looked at it and it was it was an opportunity. I mean, it was quite an opportunity considering he had just graduated we were 24 at the time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah, we were 24 years old. And we had an incredible opportunity. And I just looked at it that way. It was an mm-hmm. opportunity for me to stay home, which was something that we hadn't really considered. I still had. I still went to college to graduate, but I ended up staying home with you. And, uh, yeah. And you moved into... The duplex. We moved into the duplex. I That is a place I didn't want to be. I did not want to be there because it was, it was a little outdated. Yeah, it was a little, it's still a little <laughs> it outdated. It was the former funeral home. <laughs> yes. So the funeral home and this duplex that we're referencing, they share the same parking lot. Mm-hmm. And the du- so when they bought the funeral home, the duplex came with the funeral home. They're well, its own together. So the benefit of that was that we got to grow up right next door to the funeral home. That's where you lived. Dad could walk to work. It was like 10, 15 mm-hmm. steps. But the duplex used to be the old funeral home. Yes. 
And I, when I say the old funeral home, I mean like they used to embalm bodies in that in that house. They had funerals in the living room. Mm-hmm. The offices were, I mean, it, like the it was the funeral home mm-hmm. until they built the funeral home next door. I don't even know what year that was. I have no idea. But uh, but anyways, and that's that's where we lived. Did so we moved into the duplex. I remember growing up there. Mm-hmm. It was a nice place to. Mm-hmm. It was a nice place to be. We made it home. Mm-hmm. We made it our home. Lots of wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. Wallpaper was big then. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, this I is in the nineties. Cringe at the wallpaper I put up there. <laughs> <laughs> I I had to help take it down. <laughs> yeah, that was a. It was oh my a lot gosh. Of paneled walls. Nothing mm-hmm. against paneled walls, but we weren't used to that, and so I just tried to make it home mm-hmm. as best that I could. And that did include some wallpaper. But do you have any ghost stories from the duplex? Did anything weird ever happen there? No. I nothing happened. Well, no, nothing weird happened there. And I don't mean weird because it's not weird to us anymore. But um, nothing paranormal, paranormal happened to me there that I know of that I can remember or recall. I don't know, think so, which is unusual. I think it's unusual, but. Definitely at the funeral home. Yeah. The new funeral home. Yeah. But the... not not that home. But I was 24 then. I was a new mom. I was going to school. Um, we were in a new place. I don't even think I had time to think about that. Oh, I know. I know what that feels like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't have time to think about it. I certainly wasn't channeling anything. That's for darn sure. No. <laughs> I was changing diapers, reading books, going to school, student teaching. Yep. I had no time to I had no time to open myself up to that sort of thing. It wasn't even in my brain. It wasn't even a thought. No. It was not a it wasn't a thought. Um the, you know, it was yeah, was not a thought. Absolutely not. Okay, here's a question. Was it hard making friends in a small town when you own a funeral home in the 90s? Did people look at you funny in town like Yeah, so have you ever thought about that? Like, can you remember? Yeah. Well, certainly I remember those days quite well. But was it hard to make friends? No, not really. Okay. Um, I think mainly because the town w- had an older population, as you know. But that meant that the younger population, meaning, you know, 20, 20 to 24 to 30, really kind of went out of their way to meet and at least that's my that's my perception of it mm-hmm. kind of went out of their way to meet other people so if you met somebody at the park a mother at the park or w- whatever there was right? no like cell phone distractions where you ignore no each other phones. when you're at the park we didn't even have internet no at this time <laughs> at this time we did not even have internet if i wanted to talk on the phone which was rare i had this cord you know, it so, was so long too. Yeah. Honestly, it's it kind of dangerous. It was a really long cord. <laughs> I remember getting it wrapped was like up in 20 that. Twenty feet. <laughs> but, um, anyways, no, it wasn't hard to. It really wasn't. I think that life. I don't know. You were my, just busy too. In my opinion, life just brought me the right people, the right friends. Not always, but in in my opinion, during those times, we just happened to meet the right the right people, and it was okay. It was okay. We felt at home soon after being there. I wanted to talk to you about, tell me about the time you guys got the first child death at the funeral home. Ooh, we're going to go right into that. We're going to go right into that. Ooh. I know. That was hard. I know. Mm, That was hard. Well, uh, by that time... It was, I know I had your sister. By that time I had your sister, she was a little baby. You would have been two at that time, I believe, and two and a half, and then we had your sister. And then we got the first baby call. It was horrifying. It was awful. It was something that I will never forget. I know your dad will never forget it. And um, 
What happened to the baby? Well, the baby had just been born. The baby was, I don't want to say just born, but the baby was within, I'll say, zero to three months. Somewhere. So really little. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that time where mom and dad didn't want to leave the baby home. It was winter. And they had an idea, and just innocent idea, to you know, strap the baby on to, you know, in into a baby carrier and bring the baby with them snowshoeing. And so they did. They went out snowshoeing for the day. We lived in a beautiful area to do that. And she put the baby on her chest and zipped her coat up around the carrier. And ultimately ended up accidentally suffocating the baby oh and um that was that was that was tough that was tough and what made it so tough is one always children are difficult Mm -hmm. but um that was the first one you had though that was our first owning the funeral home that was our first call and I had a baby at that time I had you and I had your sister and uh, that made it. I would. I always cried for the people. I. They would be. I would see them go into the funeral home, and I would be. They wouldn't even know that I would be watching them with my little babies, and then I would be sobbing for them. You're watching them through the kitchen window, mm-hmm. holding the babies. Yeah. 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 Really tragic, and sad. And your dad wanted it to be perfect for them everybody he wanted to be perfect you know Mm -hmm. like every funeral director who cares about the families um in these communities because by that time we had gotten to know a lot of people in that community yeah you really do and (laughs) i know i've told you this but he came in one day i was sitting on the floor playing with you and he came in just before that funeral and he was getting the baby ready and he said, I need a baby blanket. And he wanted one of our girls' baby blankets. And I was speechless. I was absolutely speechless that he would come in. and. But you know what? I didn't want him to take the baby blanket because he wanted me to come and make sure everything was perfect. He wanted me to go look, go see the baby, please tell him what, what, what needed to change, were the flowers in the right places, did the baby look okay? And I said, you can't take that baby blanket. And he said, they didn't bring one. Ask them to bring one, I said. And he said, never. Oh. I will not ask them to bring one. We can just give them one of ours. And I understood that after a while, but... It was was really it was getting into this industry as an outsider. Boy, I had a lot of adjustment to do. I had a lot of adjustment to do, and uh, and that that was so hard on me. The whole thing was so hard on me that I turned to reading books. I talked to the pastor in town. How do you deal with this? And I think that right there things led into a more of a spiritual journey also that I wasn't Mm -hmm. expecting in this funeral in this funeral business I remember you saying that when dad came and asked for the blanket and you picked a blanket together um and then when you went to see the baby and the baby was wrapped in the blanket and the family didn't they give you a hug or it was oh sure I mean they were so grateful because in their mourning, of course, not only were they mourning, but they were blaming themselves oh. for the death of their baby, um, thinking they were doing the right thing and finding out that they didn't, like all parents do sometimes. And, and you know, we can look back and say, geez, I, I can't believe I did that, whatever. And, yeah, the baby looked perfect. Wrapped up in the little Wrapped baby up blanket. Wrapped in one of our children's baby blankets. And I will never forget that. I don't know why. It's just imprinted on my soul. It wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong. It was right. But 
it was so difficult. And I will never forget it. And that's the thing about being in funeral service is you don't forget those deaths and you try to warn everybody you can about it. Yeah, I, I, I think it also puts them to perspective perspective puts it into perspective that death can happen to anybody absolutely anybody at any time and that's why I think these things are so important to talk about and to educate others or even just to spread awareness it because we can it's just not talked about enough Mm -mm. I I really don't think it is Mm -mm. and what might seem like common sense to somebody might not be a thought for somebody else they might think that they're doing the right thing and they're not and and accidents happen so fast Mm -hmm. I don't even know why that phrase exists common sense I hate when people say that it's common sense really if it was common sense then people wouldn't be making that mistake mm -hmm. I hate when they say that they say that in my comment section sometimes well that's common sense you know, it might be to you, but they might not have thought of it that way. Right. And when you're a new parent and you're sleep deprived and you're just trying to make it day by day and you're not thinking straight, mm-hmm. you could make a really quick bad decision. And, and you didn't you didn't think that death could happen, mm-hmm. that 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 one split decision could change your life forever. Mm-hmm. It's not com- common sense is not so common. No. As it turns out. And I think that's an they unfair. They didn't do it on purpose. No. It was an accident. They probably still live with that, even though it was, well, you're 28 years ago. Um, it just wasn't common sense. And I see people doing it today. I do. I, mm-hmm. I see advertisements for these things. And I was pointing out to you the I other know. day. I know. You wanted me to make a TikTok. I wanted you little to make PSA. a TikTok about this. I still will. People, but people will terrorize you because you want to save a child because we've seen it. I know. We've seen it. And until you lived it, then sit down. You have nothing to say. And I think a lot of the content that I put out too, even if we haven't cared for a child that say, let, let's bring up water beads. I've never cared for a child that has died because of a water bead accident. But I think that spreading awareness is so important. And when you've cared for a child or a baby or an infant that has died from an accidental death, it sticks with you. And you start to look at the world a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. And I think that that knowledge and that just finding people that are willing to talk about this is, mm-hmm. it's a, it, it, it can be a really a good thing. And that's, that's kind of why I started making those types of videos. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was very helpful. So that one video I wanted her to make was there around Christmas time, they were advertising the exact same thing where you put the baby carrier on your chest or you know on your front Mm -hmm. and then you put they made this coat specifically to zip up you know they they had more material around the front to zip up around your baby and it brought you back to and i was right there looking out those windows watching those people walk in for the funeral for their baby and i thought how could they? How do these things pass on the market when when there's obvious cases? And here people, I would look in the comment section, people thought it was so neat, so neat. And I would say it's not neat. It's not neat. Never, ever, ever uh, zip your baby up. And they did. They actually showed it. I sent you those photos. Mm-hmm. Um, they zipped the coat all the way the up. They zipped the coat all the way up and... It wasn't, there just wasn't going to be a good outcome of that. So, yeah, I'll never forget that. We have several, several child deaths that, that were very poignant. Mm-hmm. They all are, but some of them. Um, you just never, you never forget them. Right. Well, the accidental ones are, are the tough. The, they're all tough. I don't mean to say that none of them are, but they all are tough. But when it's at the hands of, a parent who accidentally does it you don't forget those no you don't forget those 
I'm really good at getting off topic, so I, I took some notes of what I wanted to ask her so I stay on on topic. Before you move on, do you want to know a couple of other poignant child deaths that we had? Uh, do you want that? The next thing was tell me another death that happened that will always stick with you. And if you have more of those that you want to mm -hmm. talk about, I, I don't know if I know of them. You might. I think I told you one of them. I'm not sure. The second one, the second one that we got was a two-year-old, and it's not. And the only reason that I would share any of these stories is for awareness. Mm -hmm. Awareness, just like you do. Mm -hmm. Just you could save one child's life, then it's worth it. Yes, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. I'll t I'll take the hate all day long. I know if, if I could save one. Oh, but I see that hate, and I'm ready to fight. I, I know, <laughs> I know. I'm the fighter. She's the peacemaker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But this is a short story, but it, it has a devastating ending. And I think that a lot of us as parents have been, are, were guilty of doing this because it was easy. It was easy to do. And there was a husband and wife, and the dad had the kids. And he loaded them up into the vehicle and got into the vehicle. He put them in their car seats just like he should and got them all loaded up and he remembered that he forgot something in the house and he was in his driveway I'm sure he felt completely safe getting out of his car because his kids were in his car seats and going running back into the house and <clears throat> getting what he needed and running back out but when he did he did not realize that his two-year-old had gotten out of the car seat gotten out of the truck oh no yes and stood right behind the vehicle when his dad put the car in reverse oh no absolutely horrifying and he ended up running over running the child over and that was that was devastating in a lot of ways for their family in a lot mm -hmm. of ways for the family because when things like that happen it takes a toll on your marriage that could have happened to anybody it could happen to anybody. that could have happened to anybody i know in my lifetime that even with you girls that could have happened to me i've i've done that yeah. where i forgot something inside the house and i just hop out real quick yeah. and i run inside to grab maybe my bottle of water mm -hmm. or something and i turn around and run right back and if you've put the kids in the seat and you thought you strapped them in mm -hmm. They were in. They, they were in. They were in their car seat. Yep. And no problem. Oh. Run right in. You could even hit the lock button. And yep. You know your kids are safe, but they could still open the door. Even it didn't work that way for mm -hmm. him. It didn't work that way for the family. Those. Those are tough. Those are tough. I didn't know that one. I know. I can tell you later more about it, but um, the last story that I've going to feel comfortable sharing has more of a spiritual um, connection to it and a lot of things came out of the death of this particular child and she was 10 years old and how do I want to start this story um, hmm how do I want to start this story I think I remember this one. So she, her family had a home that w one portion of their home was like an A-frame. Mm -hmm. And that meant that it, it happened to be like their garage, um, from what I remember, was an A-frame. So the one side of their garage, you could run up on to the hill and get up onto the onto the roof get up onto the roof of the garage and when they got home from school that day the little girl ran up and got up onto the top of the roof and her brother grabbed a ball and he was throwing the ball to her and she would catch it and she would throw the ball back this is something they had done this was 
a normal occurrence for them. I remember doing this as a kid. My girlfriend had the same situation. We didn't necessarily throw a ball back and forth to each other, but I remember us getting up on that roof. So for them, it was normal to do. Getting up on the roof and like throwing the ball up and over the roof. Yep, they and would, then, yeah. Yep, and then somebody be on the other side mm -hmm. and you catch it. And they, What's that game? Annie on over? An I don't know. Uh, I L U over and I don't know. I don't know. I know what you're saying. Yeah. But. Yes. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And on this particular day, something went wrong, and she had fallen. On she fell off the garage, on her head, and she passed away. That was difficult. Oh, boy, was that difficult. We went to church with this family. Um, they were very involved in the community, a lovely, lovely family. And what transpired after that is really what is the meat of the beautiful story here that makes this more of a beautiful story and kind of gives reason for pause. But after she had passed away, the school had called the mom and dad. And this is my recollection, by the way. This is my recollection. Mm -hmm. So, and it was many years ago, so things may have changed a little bit, but this is the gist of the story. The school had called and she had won a writing contest. And they called after she died. After she died. She had won the writing contest. Yes, she had won the writing contest and they wanted to get the story to the family. Did they want to come and pick it up? Did they want them to drop it off, mail it, whatever it was? Um, they did not know that she had entered a writing contest. So, of course, they wanted to get the prize, the ribbon or whatever it was that she had won. So they got the story and it went like this. The title of the story was called Wildest Dream was riding home on the school bus one day. She got off of the school bus at her stop and she began to skip home when she noticed that a ferocious dog was chasing her. Those are her, her words. A feroci ferocious dog. <laughs> for, for, that. A ferocious dog was chasing her. So she began to, rant, to run. And she was running and she was running and the dog was gaining on her. But suddenly, as she got to her driveway, she began to sprout wings out of her back. And those wings brought her to her garage roof. So as May was standing on the garage roof, roof, her mom pulled in and said, May, what are you doing up there? And May told her how she ended up getting up there in her story. And she said, you come down here right now. And May said, okay, but I should warn you, I don't know how these work. And those being the wings on her back. And the next sentence in the story was, ah, crash, boom, bang. I have fallen on my head. Oh my gosh. Yes. This little girl fell off that roof on May 1st. The name, I get emotional about it today, but the name of the story was called May's Wildest Dream. That little girl in real life fell off the roof on May 1st. Oh my gosh. And she passed away on May 2nd. So it, it begged the question, <laughs> did May know that she was going to pass away? When her parents came to the funeral home, um, they had a lot of really spiritual stories about her that were, that were interesting. And uh, of course, I'm sitting in the home crying, 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 sobbing, holding you girls and my babies and, and, um, and uh, hoping and praying that I never have to live that. But they did, they did feel that this little girl, their little girl, had a spiritual connection. They would drive past church and she would be waving. She would be waving her hands. And mom and dad would look <laughs> at church and say, who are you waving at? And she would say, don't you see them? Oh. Don't you see them? They're waving. They're waving. And they didn't see them. 
And so it really helped them. The, her story, May's Wildest Dream, everything about her um, helped them to cope with the death of their daughter. And that is a story I will never, ever forget. But um, I sure did have a hard time with that one. I was calling the pastor again. How do I deal with this death all the time? These, uh, these terrible... Yes. This terrible loss of such young life. I mean, it's sad when someone elderly dies, but when it's a child who didn't even get a chance, it was yeah. even harder. It was even harder. I don't know if I ever told you. Do you know that I I buried her mother? No. You did? Mm-hmm. Really? A few years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know that. And I, um, I also uh, did headstone stuff i replaced her photograph on that on that headstone you of replaced her. the little girls mm -hmm. did you mm -hmm. you knew who she was mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. isn't that crazy mm -hmm. it's it's funny when you work in a small town how things can come full circle so dad cared for her mm -hmm. and then i cared for her mom when she died yeah yeah, that was that was really tough. I bet. Mm -hmm. I remembered that. Yeah, they had a strong faith. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It helped them through, and really, it just. I remember at the mom's funeral, they there wasn't any. They weren't sad. There wasn't any tears. They, they, they were happy, and she was happy to go and see her and be re reunited with her with her daughter again. Really, mm -hmm. isn't that something? Mm -hmm. I see a lot of people in your comment section that say they are afraid to die. It really breaks my heart because, and nobody wants to die, of course, no. really. Um, and fearing death, I certainly have feared death in my lifetime. When you girls were little, I feared death. I prayed constantly. Well, yeah, because as a mom, you don't <laughs> want to die and leave your kids with, uh, like, you, you, there's there's so much you want to see. You right. want You want to watch them grow. They're, you don't want to think about somebody else raising them or being them being without you. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety around that. Right. But I, I have absolutely no fear of death now. None. I I don't fear I know what people comes ask after. You that a lot. Yeah, but I don't fear what comes after we die. And I, I think there might be peace in knowing that there's really only so much that can happen to my body and like after I die. Mm -hmm. Um and it's these spiritual experiences that we share on here and together. Mm -hmm. I feel like for, for me and things that I've experienced, and I hope that through these stories that we share that we can help bring peace to other people because yeah. I, I too, I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid of what comes after because I, I do believe that we go, we get to be reunited with who we love and, and we go to a special place and mm -hmm. I, I said this last night but we live on a planet in the middle of a universe mm -hmm. and if you think how amazing that is and all of these things I mean there's just no way that there's not a God there's just no way that there's not some sort of source like source. a special I place that. that we go to that. when source. we die source um, we, we are such spiritual spiritual beings mm -hmm. and I at the fact that my content or things that we talk about can bring other people even a little bit of peace, that is such a, you start thinking like maybe that was why I was put on this earth. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, but I, I love sharing these stories so that we can bring peace to other people or Absolutely. hope they can find that too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you want me to share this, but I will. And if you don't want it in there, you don't have to. But Lauren has always had this gift. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go on here? Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Are we going I'll here? just wipe my snot on my nose right? and you can keep going. Can I'm, we take a break? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we should have grabbed the wine. <laughs> you can. As funeral directors, funeral homeowners, wives, spouses, whatever of them, they're just, you would have to not have a heart not to be touched 
by the stories. So as you see, we both get emotional. And mm-hmm. that story that I just told was over 20, like 20 years ago. It was old. a long time ago. Yeah. 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 So, and still today, it brings tears to my eyes. All of them do. But as far as Lauren goes, um, well, I want, first I want to say, I, I want to segue with this. I read after the 10 year old passed away, I had called our pastor. It, at least it was a pastor we were friends with. And I pretty sure I was crying. I'm pretty sure I really didn't want to deal with all of this death in my life when I had these new little babies. Um, and I needed, I needed help. Mm-hmm. I needed an outlet. I needed a resource. And so the resource he had given me was he recommended a book that I read. And the name of that book was called Embrace by the Light. I cannot remember the um, the author. It was a woman. Um, but the gist of it, of the gist of the story was she had clinically died in the hospital. And so her story is about um, when you clinically die, she, she ultimately got brought back to life in the hospital. But she her whole story was about the things that happened to her and her recollection of what happened upon dying. And so she claimed that she went to heaven, um, that she sat on God's lap. This is what she says, Mm -hmm. from what I remember. Mm -hmm. And she also went to go see her family. Right away, she she was outside of her body, looking down onto her body, and her first concern was her children and her yeah. husband. They had a lot of kids. I think it was five kids. I can't remember, but um, so the whole story is about that. And he, and he was right. It did help me. It did help me um, uh, in my faith, w- without answers to why why children had to die, but. Um, it was helpful. Yeah. And she talked about the questions that she had for God. And um, anyways, it was really a good book. I don't know if it's still out there, but if, you, if you're if you afraid to die, pick up some books about near-death experiences. Those fascinate me. Oh, so fascinating. Yep. Um, that particular book was called Embraced by the Light. I maybe maybe you'll find some solace in that and be less fearful of of death because it really did help me. But within that story, she said a couple of interesting things. One of the things she said is that we choose to come here. Um, we choose our parents. We choose who we want. We choose. We even. According to her, we even choose our life path as far as if you're going to end up miscarried, you already know you're going to be miscarried. If you're going to end up passing away at a young age, you already know. You have chose this for mm-hmm. yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're a person who reads the Bible, I don't have any beef with any of that. Um, I don't. Uh, good. Good. You read the Bible. I've always wanted to read it. I read excerpts of it. But in this case... This brought me peace that this 10-year-old possibly chose that. The little baby that was lost, that suffocated, possibly chose that. Um, But it brought me peace. And so I have recommended that book to people who are afraid of dying. But the most interesting thing she said was that we choose to come here. We choose to be born. We choose to come. Our souls choose to come to earth to experience a human experience. Mm-hmm. Whether you're handicapped, whether you're aborted, whether you're still born, whatever it is, according to her and her answer from a higher being is you choose you chose this. Mm-hmm. So I got through this. Uh, your your dad then labeled me a professional mourner 
So I was the professional mourner. The professional mourner. Yeah. Whenever I went into the funeral home because he wanted me to check somebody out and make sure the flowers and yep. everybody looked good yep. and the lighting. Yep. The lighting was just right. At that time, it was the pink lights. Some yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. They the big bulbs. Yep. Um, I would start crying. I just did. I just did. That's I didn't I never did develop the the thick skin that it takes to do that job. I just couldn't do it, but it's it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't my life path. Yeah. I just married. It. I yeah. just happened to marry into it. You just happened to be there. <laughs> it was your life path. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, so I want to tell you a little story about Lauren. This is so. I read that book called "Embraced by the Light" when Lauren was mm, two, three. Something like that. I can't remember what it was. Two, three, whatever. She was little. We still lived in the White House. The the well, White we, House. We called it the White House because that was the color was of the white. house. But that was the funeral home duplex was yeah. white. So we call, we lived in the White House. Yes. <laughs> We're going to fast forward a few years now. And Lauren is seven, maybe eight, seven, eight years old. And I'm tucking her into bed. And... She had they had, the girls had bunk beds, so she was on the top bunk bed, and I was tucking her in, kissing her good night. <laughs> we said a prayer. Her sister's on the bottom bunk, and she said, "I want to tell you a secret." <laughs> and so it's dark in her room. I get in real close, and I said, "Okay, what is it?" And she said, "I chose you as my mama." And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and she said, I chose you and dad. And I was just taken back because no way on earth did she know what I had read in that book mm -hmm. all those years prior to help me with the child death <laughs> that we had. And here she is, this little, this little soul in the darkness, giving me a hug and a kiss and telling me that she chose me to be her mom. And I'm telling you that I left that room. I went up to my bed, <laughs> sobbed my eyes out. <laughs> and really, things started to change spiritually for me. Um, in the funeral business for you. I don't think anything changed. You were just born the way that you were born. Um, <laughs> whatever it was, <laughs> she was just... This, whatever it was. Whatever it was, she was just this special child. That whispered <laughs> things to you in the night. <laughs> <laughs> that said things that uh, were just like, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way that she was. Many times she was you would say things like that that were like what? <laughs> How old are you anyways? <laughs> so fascinating, so very fascinating. Mm -hmm. But yes. Those those were the days. Those stories. I'm sure I have more. I'll think of them. I'll walk away and go, "Oh, I should have shared that story about this or that. No, um, we'll have to have we'll have to have you on again. I mean, you're gonna be here now. It's not so bad. No, I told you this <laughs> is just like so we're bad. just sitting down it's talking. Like, yeah. No, and and it just so happens to be recording. That was wonderful. That was great. <laughs> this has been quite the episode. I wasn't planning on crying. <laughs> Me neither. Oh my god. Why? Why can I? Why, my heart can never get over the heartbreak for yeah. someone else. No. I can't. No. And no. I feel it sticks with you. It's like yeah. little little notches on your soul and they they never get easier. Mm -hmm. You just learn how to walk through the trauma mm -hmm. over and over and over again. Well, it's really part of part of our story. Mhm. Mm maybe maybe a legacy of what's left behind I have no idea mm -hmm. but and then being on a podcast never been on a podcast before it's your first ever podcast. you don't even know what you're gonna say no I didn't even know the questions you were gonna ask me no I kept them a, secret. a heads up would have been nice 
<laughs> no, there's no fun in that. There's no fun in that. Oh, it would have been all right for me, though. All right. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap up this episode of our podcast, but I was just talking to my mom and we're going to do a ghost story episode Mm -hmm. because she (laughs) believe it or not I know this might be hard to believe we have some my mom has awesome um, spiritual supernatural experiences that she has had in her life that are goosebump chilling really just secures <laughs> every if you've if you've questioned your faith or if there's an afterlife you just have to talk to my mom <laughs> like uh because she has had some crazy experiences in her life and i'm really excited for her to share those with you just a couple just a couple oh, just a couple just a couple so and i want to div- i don't want to feel rushed i don't want to rush her through those so we will be filming another one together but i just want to thank you so much for tuning into this episode of our podcast together and we will see you next time on coffin conversations bye thanks mama you're welcome thank you bye bye okay <laughs>